Members, the House will come to order. We are back on Mr. Krause's amendment. And Mr. Krause was about to explain to us his amendment. Chair recognizes Representative Krause. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, uh, what this bill does is uh, it, it zeroes out the Racing Commission, and I'll tell you a little bit about why it does. It, I, I have no animosity towards the Racing Commission. I don't think uh, it was never on my radar. But uh, what I thought needs to happen is every time an unelected commission continues to thwart the will of the legislature, even after repeated attempts to get there, uh, I think there should be some kind of consequences. So uh, that's why uh, after repeated letters, after repeated lawsuits, after repeated urgings of the legislature, even this legislative session, we have not seen any change. And I think the, this House uh, should do something about it. Well. I move to close. Representative Simpson, for what purpose? For passage. Yep. Mr. Cassell, for what purpose? Yield. Will the member yield? Mr. Krause, will you yield? I will gladly yield. Mr. Krause, Mr. Krause yields. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Have you studied or ascertained the economic impact of other members' districts with horse farms in their district? I have not. When impacting the economy of other members' districts, I would hope you would have consulted those of us who have equine operations that are significant economic engines in our rural areas. Well, and, and I have no doubts that it is a major economic factor for a lot of districts. And, and I understand that, and I'm very sympathetic to that. My problem is after repeated letters from members in the legislature saying you don't have the constitutional authority to do this, uh, on both sides of the aisle, it said you don't have uh, ability to do this. After they've been taken to court and a judge in Tarrant County has said they don't have the ability to do this, and then a judge in Travis County says you don't have the authority to do this, and then at a hearing in the Senate on February 25th, uh, Senator Nelson comes back and says, I still have not heard anything which would make me change my mind from zeroing out the racing commission. That's what gives me pause. I certainly understand the economic impact. I'm sympathetic to that. I just think whether it's the racing commission or whoever it is, if you're seeking to continually step outside the constitutional bounds of the authority you've been delegated, I think there has to be some kind of consequence or some kind of action by the legislature to assert its preeminence over the situation. And I think that's what we're doing here to send a, a loud message, not necessarily just to the racing commission, but all those involved. I move passage. Mr. Speaker. Representative Moody, for what purpose? Gentlemen, yield for some questions. Will the gentleman yield? I will yield. Uh, gentleman you're yields. In, you're involved in, in litigation regarding the Racing Commission in Tarrant County, is that correct? That's correct. Is that litigation still pending? No, that litigation was over. And are you jo are you joined in the litigation that is currently pending here in Travis County? I'm not. Okay, and what is the status of that litigation? Uh, from what I understand, the Travis County judge ruled against the Texas Racing Commission, said they had uh, very much overstepped their constitutional bounds and I think there may be an appeal but I'm not exactly sure. My understanding is that there's not an appeal that's going to be taken is that, the, that are you that, hearing something different? That could be. I, I don't know anything different than that. But that's how the legal process goes forward? Yes. Okay so then the answer is to defund the entire commission? Well, my uh, my proposal was just in response and, and likewise to what the Senate had done. I thought that might make it easier for the conference committee. Um, we'll let, we'll let them do. We'll let them do what they want to do. Yeah, I, I do think that the litigation is an important thing that needs to be needs to go forward, and those issues are going to be decided and the constitutionality of what their actions are, whether they have the authority to do it or not. And I think those are legitimate questions to ask. But the response to those things should not be to defund the entire commission because we're involved in litigation or litigation is pending or that we disagree with maybe something the commission did i think that maybe is a step too far and you know at, at this late hour i think we should probably think about 
what we do and make sure that the actions we take here are commensurate with the issues that we're dealing with at, at, in, in the court system. So, Yeah, and, and thank you, Representative. And I would hope that you would agree with me that whenever a, a commission, an unelected commission, continually thumbs its nose, basically, at the legislature after well, giving repeated attempts to well, correct I actually, itself. I actually, I actually sent them a letter that supported what they did. I actually do think that the court got it wrong in that case. And so I think there are other members in this body that sent them letters contrary to what, what, what you're saying up there. And, and that's our right to do that and, and weigh in on those things. But then to come back and use our budgetary process to put pressure on a commission as this litigation is still pending, I don't think is a proper way to handle that. We should let that process go forward. And whether appeal goes up or down, you know, that, that's something that could be dealt with in the courts. And, and obviously we can, you know, we can handle things with the commission in a different way, in a less heavy-handed ma manner than this. But, but, but don't you think that's kind of the role of the legislature when it's something we've created, something we've delegated? That's really our only recourse, right, when, when something's happening? And I think it's well within the, the purview and discretion of the legislature when you see something like this happening, a rogue agency. And, and what we have is the power of the purse, and that is how we can show well, we can, we can also We can also tighten up those, those boundaries within their power to make sure that there is no question, because maybe they thought they had the authority. There are other people that think they don't have the authority. We have we have the ability to come in and fix that legislatively, and I think that's something we can do outside of the budget through legislation. This is a heavy-handed measure to essentially wipe them out for doing something that I think there is a legal question about. And I just don't think that's the right way to handle things um, on a debatable point that in, in, in one court was... Uh, thrown out and the other one will sustain but there's an appeal that may or may not go forward so uh, I think there's others other people with questions so I'll step back thank you representative Moody mr. speaker with the gentleman yield representative Riddle yes what purpose uh, to ask a few questions representative Krause do you yield yes gentleman yields representative Krause have you uh, visited with anyone from the Racing Commission not recently. We had some communication during the lawsuit, but that's about it. So you have not communicated with the executive director at all? I have not. I did communicate with the uh, board member who was uh, the head of DPS, who actually put in a statement when they were moving forward with the rule on the historical racing machines, reiterating her position that the commission did not have the authority to move and do what they were doing. So I did well, have conversations well, with that Well, I member. have a text here, Representative that the executive director uh, is stating that you have not communicated with them regarding your issues. I have another question. Are you at all familiar with the horse industry in the state of Texas? I'm not. And, and see, that, that's what I don't want to get caught up in. I, I'm not against the horse racing industry. I'm not against the horse industry. I'm not against those districts that rely heavily on that. I just think as a body, it's a very important and critical issue that when a commission it continues to step, overstep its constitutional bounds, that this, uh, that this body takes some action and measure against it. So, I, again, I, I have no animosity. I have no animus towards the horse racing industry or any of those things. It wasn't any of my intent to be involved with anything at the Texas Racing Commission. It just happened because we kept seeing them time and time again. It just kind of again. got in your way, apparently. It's a little bit like having a patient with oxygen and the doctor saying, you know what, I have nothing against the patient, but I think I'm going to kick his oxygen. The horse industry is a major industry in the state of Texas, not just racing, I, I breeding agree. horses, and then there are all of the other other jobs and the other professions that go along with it in veterinary medicine and the, with the farriers there there are so many other things that go along with this industry right no and I... and that industry you are trying to tank no. it will go down the tubes flat zero not a, that's it I, I think that you need to be a little with all due respect i think you need to be better advised and and better informed before you 
take off after a full industry in the great state of Texas. Well, and, and, and I agree that it's very important, which I think makes it even more... If you think it's it, important, then you wouldn't have this amendment. If you had any respect for horses, if you had any respect for the horse industry, if you had any respect for any of the other people who earn their living throughout the state of Texas, it is a multi-million dollar industry in the state of Texas. It's already suffered enough. Yours would be the final blow. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Represent Burkett raises a point of order. The gentleman's time has expired. The point of order is well taken and sustained. There you go. Oh. Representative Gonzalez, I speak against the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, what Mr. Krause is doing is he is taking the appropriations away from the Racing Commission. What he is not doing is he is not outlawing racing. So the net effect of this bill is unregulated racing all over the state because he hasn't outlawed racing itself. So what's going to happen is you're going to have racing all over the state, unregulated, all the protections that we have in place that regulate this industry are gone. But the races will continue, the races can continue. That's what that's that's what's wrong with the amendment. So if you want unregulated horse racing, vote for this because you'll have horse races all across the state that are completely that are completely unregulated. Members, Representative Krauss is going to withdraw his amendment. Members, we're back on Article 8. What page? Page 307.